Well, my tiger belt. Yes. Are we gonna get on the camera? That's awesome. It's a six dollar tiger belt. Where else would you pay for a belt that looks this terrible? That's how I roll. Hey, uh, so I just finished up the Pete the Planner Divorce Recovery Guide two weeks ago, and it's coming out in a couple weeks uh, in print form, uh, which made me think. I help people separate finances sometimes, unfortunately, but yes. let's help them also combine, combine finances. So, Nessa, I want to give you tips and everyone else some tips today on Great. what to do to uh, when you're in a committed relationship with a significant other and, and how to actually combine money effectively uh, so that uh, there are very few roadblocks. Because sometimes you're also combining debt, which is not a positive thing. No, that's absolutely right. And the, the worst place to start uh, when you uh, combine finances is to start with combining debt. You don't want to do that. If you're in a committed relationship, especially if you're not married, you don't want to necessarily buy a car together. You don't necessarily want to buy a house together. Now, you can buy a house and buy a car. Mm -hmm. You just don't want to put both people's names on those things as you're trying to get comfortable within your situation. That goes as well as a credit card. And so there's something called an authorized user on a credit card, and there's something called a co-borrower. Uh, they look and feel the same, okay. but it's a huge difference, and you don't want to deal with either of them uh, if you're in a committed relationship and not married and trying to figure out how to deal with finances. Because as I'm writing this divorce guide and finishing this divorce guide, if you're an authorized user or a uh, co-borrower, co oh, it makes a huge difference as to who has to pay what at the end. Okay. So, so I, I, if the debt, if they rack up debt on the credit card, does it come back to the co-borrower if it doesn't get paid? Well, absolutely. Kind of and in fact, if, if you're an authorized user and it's my card, I'm responsible for paying the charges, and you can just charge it up, and it never Ooh. hits your credit score. But nice. if we're co-borrowers, it, it affects both of us. Okay. So that's divorce. We're talking about coming together. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh, number two thing you need to do when you want to start to share finances is to share a shared category or start a shared category account. Uh, maybe dining out or if you like to go to the movies or the theater or a lot. So both make equal deposits into that account and then use that account specifically for those purchases. I think taking it slow and just choosing one category can be a real effective way to gain that trust. Ultimately, if you don't trust your partner with money, you don't trust them. Yes. So you need to build that. And so the way to do that is to start with a category or two. Uh, again, I think dining out's a, a great way to go, unless you're in my situation where I eat a lot more than my wife does. But that's neither here nor there. So uh, finally, you want to leave investments separate, okay? okay? If you're in a committed relationship and you're trying to combine finances, which uh, is certainly your right, and it can be the next step to improving a relationship, Leave investments completely separate. There's really no reason to combine them. There's no advantage to it. Okay. Uh, there's a lot more disadvantage. And a lot of times when we, when we talk about helping people's relationships with money, which can be just a really tough thing, right. you have to look at is there something to gain by doing it versus how much is there to lose. Yes. And there's a lot more to lose with combining investments when you're not married. Okay. Um, so something to consider there. Yeah, and having money talks is kind of a sensitive issue. So what tips would you give for people that are trying to attack that problem. A, a monthly budget meeting, you know, I'm always talking about budgets on here. My wife and I sit down 20 minutes a, a month on a Saturday morning and we just talk about money and get it all on the table. Remember this, there's no such thing as a good spontaneous money conversation. They yeah, are. that is very true. You very come true. home from the store and you see a receipt and then it just gets a little silly. So um, I'm not saying I, I look at Mrs. Planner's receipts when she gets home. That's not what I'm saying. Uh, but always have planned money conversations. It'll improve your relationship and it'll improve that trust factor. Again, if you don't trust them with money, you don't trust them, and you can't ignore that fact. A couple other quick things. Joint gift giving can be a very good thing. Maybe have an account to give joint holiday gifts together uh, to improve the money relationship. Okay. Utilities are terribly boring, of course, but they're also, if you have an account where you both pay utilities out of that account, that's a good way to build trust in a relationship. But here's my plea to you for the week. Start small when you start combining uh, money in your relationship. Have a serious discussion. In fact, have frequent serious discussions once a month. Finally, learn to trust. There's always going to be someone who's not as good with money, which I don't really believe in, but it's true. Most people feel that way. So just learn to trust, give and take. And if you haven't already, make sure you're going to PeteThePlanner.com and sign up for a holiday savings league. Great. This is another way we're trying to help people improve their money relationship by uh, getting out in front of the holidays, saving for them effectively together, and making sure you're not going into debt 
to provide the gift for the people you love. Awesome. And if you want to hear more from Pete the Planner, as I always do, catch yeah. them Sundays at 11 on... WXNT, 1430 AM. Yeah, I talk for an entire hour, so awesome. you may have to have the volume very close. Okay, well, we will be back. Keep hanging out with us because we've got an exciting event coming your way.